Dag de Yee, Fugus Falsha. Hi, hello, and welcome. It is John O'Sullivan from the Irish Pagan School, and I am here following up on this tradition of Kesht and Nianza, which is the Irish word for question and Nianza, not hard to say. And so um, I have come to TikTok as an Irish educator in spirituality, mythology, culture, history, and I'm here to answer your questions to the best of my ability. And so I have a Kesht or a question from the awesome and amazing Morgan Daimler. Um, Morgan is a friend of mine and also one of our educators at the Irish Pagan School. So if you're interested in picking up their classes or their teachings on the Banshee or on fairy lore, the other crowd, the good neighbours in Ireland and the Irish culture about them, pop over to the Irish Pagan School. There's a couple of different amazing classes by them. Um, but them being a friend of mine, they always ask me the most awkward fucking questions. And the question, the cash from Morgan is, what is your favourite Dagda story and why that one? So for those of you who don't know, um, I refer to myself as Dagda Bard. And the Bard is a storyteller and uh, they, they functioned in ancient Irish society as a repository of memory. Their, their the role was to remember the stories and to tell people about the stories and tell them why about the stories as well. And so the deity or the god that I work for in the Irish pantheon of gods is on Dagda, on Dagda Moor. Now, he is pretty, pretty important. He is a pretty big deal in the Irish gods. Um, uh, but, you know, for many years, he really wasn't seeing much in the way of followings, worship or promotion. Um, and it was only in my personal connection with him that I got to know him in line with my own spirituality, my own spiritual growth, that I really began to explore and know more and learn more about this good God. So for Morgan to ask me this question is like asking uh, a cinephile to pick their favourite movie. It's like asking a bibliophile to pick their favourite book. You know, it's like asking the, the person who has the most eclectic, broadest taste in music to pick not their favourite band, their favourite track by their favourite band. That is how complex what Morgan has asked me to do. And I, I love them, but I don't like them for it. <laughs> so... Um, what I will say is that there are many, many stories about Antagda, Antagda Moor, and I have kind of connected with them all in various different ways at various different times in my life. And maybe it is part of my own growth, part of my own process as I am evolving and changing that I'm beginning to connect more with different aspects of him. Because, you know, in the first battle of Moitora, for example, when the two of the Danon arrive into Ireland, they battle against the Firbolog, the, you know, already incumbent tribe of people there. And we have a very warlike Dagda. In fact, it says that on one of the particular days, because this was a battle over a couple of days, in that it started in the morning, they fought for the day, and then they stopped in the evening and everyone went back. Um, so on one of the days, the Dagda was given control of the left flank of the two of the Danon forces. And that morning, he himself charged the battle lines of the Fomorians and opened a gap for 150 lads to follow him. He got stuck in and made a big ass gap for the rest of his forces to follow him on the field that day. And, you know, as a kid, I grew up rough and tumble. I know what it was like to get into scraps. And I was not the most reserved <laughs> with my strength as a child. Um, and so, yeah, I, I was physical in those ways as well and I, I i connect and i associate with that but also on that same day that's the same day when nuada the king lost his arm in one-on-one -on -one combat with shrang the champion of the fear bullock and so what happens is nuada goes down and his arm is cleaved off from him it says it's his shield arm um but he's also wielding on cleave solace the sword of light which is supposed to mean you're not supposed to lose when you have this sword in your hand but he loses the shrink. And this message ripples across the battlefield to the Dagda on the far left flank. And then the Dagda just moves. And it says that though Nuda was on the ground, alienated, cut off and on his own, surrounded by Firbolog everywhere, Shrang was stepping in to bring the last blow. Boom, in comes the Dagda. Scatters everyone, stands over Nuda, surrounded by all the Firbolog, everyone trying to get in to get the kill and blow. Because if you take Nuda... War's over. Game's over. It, it's done. But Dagda won't have that happen. He stands over the king and not a wound, not another wound falls on Nuada until he is taken away from the battlefield that day and restored to the best of Dean Hicks' ability to return to the battle the next. 
And so that is indomitable warlike Tagda. And is that my favourite story? I don't know. You seem to, I love that story. But also we then have the the, the, the musical Dagda. We have the Dagda when the second battle of Moitura kicks off. The Fomorians kind of invade. It's all going bad for the Fomorians because the two of the are absolutely straight up ready for them. And Lou is there to fulfil his prophecy and slay his grandfather, Balor of the Baelai. But in the aftermath of that, the Dagda's own home, home is robbed. He is absolutely raided by none other than Bress and his the fallen king of the two of the Danon and his father, Alatha. But the Dagda, Alma and Lu go to recover his stuff from this raiding party. And one of the most important things he recovers is his harp, which is... No, well, it, it's either known as Dor, I call it Dordal Blah, which is the Oak of Two Meadows. And um, there's also another name which is given as Uthni, but I don't know if Uthni is the harp or if Uthni is in fact the harper. But the Daita kind of calls this harp off the wall where it had been hung because no one could play it because the music was magically trapped inside the harp. And then he plays the music. He plays not just any music, he plays the three strains of emotion, the joyful strain. He plays the three strains of emotion, the three strains of music. So he plays the joyful strain, which has all of his enemies dancing. He plays the wailing strain, which has them weeping and mourning. And then he plays the soon tray or the sleeping strain that lures, lulls all of these for more for Formorian invaders into sleep where they rest. And then Daitha, Alma and Lou leave. <laughs> they don't like slaughter their enemies. They don't leave a pile of bodies. They just leave having shifted the emotion with the magic but is that my favorite story i don't know because it's another story that is isn't exactly central to the dagda but he's in it and that is a later story where angus the dagda's young son gets in over his head he he, he goes in the wooing of a ton to try and bring a ton the most beautiful woman in all of ireland back to marry midder and it doesn't really go well because you know a ton's father doesn't really want that wedding to happen and so he demands that Angus clear a forest for him and make it a plain and Angus goes to his dad to the Dagda and is like oh I've promised this stuff and I need to kind of get it done and the Dagda's like okay well let's just get to work and we get it done and he clears the entire forest in one night and then the next day Angus again trying to get Aton, Aton's father's like well you need to irrigate that plain you just made so you need to draw out some rivers and make that work and Angus again goes bewailing to his father for assistance. And so we see like a, the dad dagged it in that capacity where his children are, need him and his children need him to help out. And he 100% is there for them that entire time. So Morgan, I absolutely love you. I really, really do. But it is very, very hard for me to declare a single story because I, I absolutely enamored of. Oh, wait, unless I get tricky. My favourite story of the Dagda is the Dagda's story, because the Dagda story is all of it. So everything from his past through with the cauldron, the, the cauldron of the two of the that came with him into Ireland, all of the conflicts, all of the rest, his story, his narrative, his timeline, which then actually includes me as Dagda Bird now telling his stories in a modern context. Oh, I've gone and said a thing where I really shouldn't have said. OK, yes, that is my favourite story about the Dagda. And I am involved in the telling of that story. And I will carry on doing so to the best of my ability. If you have found this interesting, you can pop over to the Irish Pagan School. I do a lot more content talking about the Dagda there, as well as teaching classes about the Dagda, how to interact with him from a spiritual point of view, from a cultural point of view, and how to, to kind of live a Dagda life if you are looking to experience that for yourself. So thank you very much for the question, Morgan. Knee answer, not hard to say, but in fact, kind of hard to say. I love you. You're great. You're fantastic. Oh, also, if you don't go and pick up Morgan's kind of classes in our school, then go and pick Morgan's book. Morgan Daimler is a, a translator of not just modern Irish, old Irish, the old kind of Irish. Morgan is a, a an expert in translating that as well and does amazing content. So you'll find him on Living Liminally is their blog. But, you know, definitely do go and support the artists who are doing amazing kind of work. They did a translation of the Katmaktura, which is the second battle of Moitura. Um, which is available on Amazon and it's Morgan Daimler. So absolutely pop on and pick up their content because they are a legend and they are great. So much love from me to you, Morgan. Thank you very much for the great question and awkward question. And uh, until next time, I will see you around. Gaurav Mahagat Agaslan.